Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Vlog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well, and today, oh my goodness, this is just, I think, some of the funniest news that I've heard today. This is something that actually broke a little bit earlier today, um, and I just honestly cannot believe the ego that this one director has and just how completely oblivious and stupid just stupid this guy truly is so if you watched my video yesterday i talked about how uh the snyder cut has been confirmed for an hbo max release in 2021 you all know that i am still uh, very critical of Zack snyder and i am still very critical of just everything going on with that however at the same time i can absolutely admit that there is a large fan base that has been desiring that cut of justice league for a very long time, has been very passionate, has been very active, and has been really vocal about it. And so therefore, for them to get that moment of finally getting confirmation that that version of the film that they've been wanting for a long time is finally going to actually be completed and scheduled to come out next year, again, it was obviously a very cool thing for that to happen. However, what Paul Feig has decided, Paul Feig, Paul Feig, I don't ex not ex exactly know how to pronounce his name, and I really care, because this dude has his head so far up his tush that he has no idea what year it even is, because apparently he thinks that now is the time to make everyone realize, oh, guess what? You thought hashtag release the Snyder Cut was amazing. Just wait until you get your three plus hour long edition of Ghostbusters 2016. That's right. Ghostbusters 2016's director thinks that he can either garner as much anticipation or as much vocal support or that it already exists for a three hour cut of Ghostbusters 2016. Now, let me just be perfectly honest here. I have not met a single person that has either loved that movie or even genuinely liked it. I've met people that said, oh, it was okay, it was mediocre, but I didn't really like it because of the political stuff. Again, people have been able to at least say that there was some mediocrity to it, and that's about as positive as they've been able to actually go with that film. I've never heard anyone say that they loved it, let alone that they would want a three-hour-plus cut of it. So, Paul... I don't know what the hell you're smoking, dude, but obviously it has to be something of your own aroma. But let's go ahead and dive into this article from Comic Book. Ah, comicbook.com, and it says here, following the announcement that Zack Snyder's Justice League would be coming to HBO Max in 2021, the internet started sharing jokes about various other unseen projects they'd like to see released, with the director of, Paul, of 2016's Ghostbusters, Paul Feig, weighing in on the matter by claiming there's a three and a half hour cut of his film that he's been waiting to release, given that Feig is known for his many hilarious comedies, and that included the hashtag of Figer Cut. It's unclear how serious he is about an unreleased version of his film, but this, <laughs> but with the film being such a sprawling adventure, we wouldn't doubt that a lot of scenes ended up on the cutting room floor. And so you're admitting that this could be a joke. You're admitting that we, we you don't know exactly how serious or not serious he is, but what we can go by is what he has said about this movie before. He has completely defended Ghostbusters 2016, and he has been critical of the release of the upcoming Ghostbusters reboot that takes place in the same universe that the first two Ghostbusters films did. Uh, obviously, his version did not really actually exist in the uh, Ghostbusters universe as was set forward by the very fact that they brought certain actors that played different roles back from the originals and also it just doesn't even acknowledge that the Ghostbusters had existed in a previous time and that is one of the many reasons why that film was a complete bust mostly because of the crazy amount of identity politics just lingering throughout that entire movie and also the fact that it's just not funny. It, it is one of the blandest movies, and it's amazing that they still try and label it as a so-called comedy when it was just so damn bad. He says, there's a three and a half hour cut of Ghostbusters, answer the call. Oh, you don't want to call it Ghostbusters 2016 like everyone else does? Because guess what? <laughs> Everyone remembers that crap fest. I'd be happy to share. F hashtag Feiger Cut. Feig shared on Twitter when a fan asked for a Feig cut of Justice League. Oh boy. Uh, again, people were probably playing around with him. And either one, you could argue he's playing right back with them. Or two, he's being completely serious. Because as I mentioned, he does not ever, he has not, to my knowledge, ever disavowed that movie. Or even admitted that there were problems or that it wasn't the best film that it could have been. Or anything to that effect. He has said that that movie was great, and the only reason why people didn't like it is because of sexism and because of any other random political thought that you could possibly put out there. 
While Hollywood has regularly delivered audiences remakes of beloved films, few projects have sparked as much controversy in recent years as Feig's film. Ahead of the film's release, some fans consider the project to be the final straw in remakes due to the success of the original film, while other toxic <laughs> here it is, while other toxic fans began trolling the endeavor due to its decision to deliver female heroes instead of male protagonists. If you honestly think that is the reason why people hated the movie and, and, and didn't want to see it and, and spoke out against it, you are so full of your own crap. And guess what? Comvoke.com, you have proven yourself to be king of shills once again. Thank you so much for reminding me why I don't go to your site very often. However, you're one of the only big, big names in news that's even covering this story because no one cares about Ghostbusters 2016. We would like just to pretend that it never actually existed while you and Paul here are going to try and live in a fantasy world where people loved your movie even though no one actually went to go see it. I'm sure you're going to spin that in just a second. It says right here, the film itself earned a 74% positive rating as calculated by aggregator site Rotten Tomatoes because we all know how reliable Rotten Tomatoes is. Mm, I wonder what that audience rating was, though. Yeah, it wasn't that high. It wasn't 74%. I wonder who were making that, who were making such positive reviews about that movie. Oh, wait, that's right. The liberal elitist critics that are in your pocket as well. But while, <laughs> but with its earning only $229 million, well, at least you're fair there. It is only $229 million worldwide. On a reported budget of $144 million, its financial success was far short of expectations or that's a more kind way of saying it was a massive flop it was a massive flop again they only get 60 percent the studio only got 60 percent of that 229 million dollar take and then you have to add in half of the 144 million on top of it to add to marketing costs so you're looking at a film that was between 50 and 100 million dollar loss yeah, great job paul and there is his tweet there trying to say can we get the paul Feig cut of justice league instead he said mockingly, and then Paul either again was being completely just, you know, having fun right back or is being completely serious and seeing that this dude's ego is so large, it would not surprise me if he was being completely serious about all of this. Uh, there is a three and a half hour cut of Ghostbusters ATC. I'd be happy to share. <laughs> LOL. There's so much extra footage. Don't you just want to see all of the non-jokes in that movie and more politicization of characters? Yeah, that's what everyone wants, right? A proper sequel to the original live-action films, Ghostbusters Afterlife, was slated to hit theaters this summer only for the beer bug pandemic to see the project's release delayed. Despite the franchise exploring a different avenue with its latest film, Feige previously revealed that he would still like to see his reboot characters embraced by the series in the future. And guess what? If anyone in the industry was smart, they would pretend like your crap film never existed. They would be better off saying, you know what, Ghostbusters 2016, that exists in its own universe, and we don't really care about that anymore, because for them to embrace it and to try and say, ooh, let's make that officially a part of the canon and bring the characters back would be the dumbest idea that you could ever possibly imagine. I hope, Feig said with SlashFilm.com, another site that used to be really great, and then as soon as 2016 happened, they just delved into politics, and it's been bad ever since. What's so great, in the comic book world, they've done a lot of crossover ones where there's an interdimensional rip, and our team joins up with the original Ghostbusters. So the fact that that's already been laid and made comic book canon, anything could happen, so who knows? I would love to see that team come back. We had so much fun making that movie. Too bad no one had fun watching your movie, Paul. For, what I, for whatever contract controversy it caused. It was a bad film that wasn't funny. In addition to the politics, the fact that so many kids love it that we won the Nickelodeon Best Movie of the Year award that year makes me so very happy. Oh, wait a minute. So your, your, your big argument that people loved your movie, especially kids loved your movie, was the fact that you won a Nickelodeon Best Movie of the Year award, where they literally have a thousand different awards for the, almost the same category, so that way they can give any a movie that they potentially have any stars attached to, to actually come to their awards ceremony, because that award ceremony is not taken seriously. Like, seriously, that's like step away from saying, oh, so the People's Choice Awards! Oh, the People's Choice Awards! <laughs> Great! But guess what? You didn't get any other awards because your movie sucked. Stay tuned for more details on the Ghostbusters franchise. Are you hoping that we get a director's cut of the Ghostbusters reboot? Hell no! And guess what? Most people don't. The fact, and, and again, you've already said it for yourself, the fact that the movie only made $229 million worldwide on a $144 million budget makes it very clear that one, financially alone, they would be stupid to come up with a second film, and, and second, Seriously, Paul, and seriously, comic, comicbook.com, 
It's very, very simple here, all right? You had a bad movie. You had a, a cast that had some people in it that are actually genuinely funny, but you gave them the most boring lines. You purposely changed characters in a certain way because of politics, not because of creativity, and not because of anything else. Seriously, you start with the concept of, ooh, what if all the Ghostbusters were women? And we've all know, and we've all figured out at this point, that if you start off a story with, what if they're all X? Or what if they're all Y? and you're all male, all women, all this, all that, and you start off with gender or race as being your, your sole and primary storytelling narrative, that it's gonna be a bad movie. And guess what? Your movie right here is what most of us consider the epicenter of identity politics being thrust into film franchises. Obviously, it's been in Hollywood for a long time, but as far as them trying to go back in time, take old established film franchises and try and modernize them for the sole purpose of politicizing them, has really started since Ghostbusters 2016 as the epicenter. And it was such a massive failure that we have been able to say the phrase, go woke, go broke. And guess what? A lot of that comes from your movie, Paul. So yeah, please release. I want you, Paul. I want you, I dare you to release a three hour cut of your movie. And I want you to release it in theaters. And I want you to see how much more money you can lose for that studio. Paul, you're full of it, man. I hope that you were joking, but something tells me that because of your ego, you probably were not. But anyway, what are your thoughts about this? Are you excited for a Ghostbusters three-hour cut, a Ghostbusters 2016 full cut? And also, what are your thoughts about comicbook.com? Because, dear Lord, Patrick Kavanaugh and everyone working at comicbook.com, uh, yeah, grow some integrity, will you? Anyway, let me know your thoughts about this and everything we talked about in the comment section below. If you like this video, smash that like button, hit that subscribe. It helps out a lot. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Have a wonderful day, and as always... God bless. And now a huge shout out to my May Patreon and subscribe star members, Albertus Magnus, Animation Commentator, Brian P, Dion, Divex, Enrique Evangelista, Father Christopher Miller, hail to you, Father, Frank the Tank and the Shaw Hand Wiener Dog Clan, Harold Francis, the Hunker, Chunker, Funker Monkey, Inflame Wood, It's a Trap Productions, Jason Clark, Jeffrey Toon, Kenneth Cameo, Lady T, Laura Story, Mad Mitch Dunaway, Mike Jackson, Mr. Peabody and his evil twin with the beautiful hair, Orange Hat Reviews, Outpost Dyer, Out of Step with Reality, Riff Magos, Rosetta Allen, Steve Glasker, Teresa Martin, Theodore Benden, Tina Bojan, The DJD Show, and Tina B. Thank you all for being my Patreon members, and a shout out to my subscribe star peeps, John B, Perpetual Punster, Robert Revo, Mr. Roy, Glinzer, G2 Cool 99, Darkstar 57, J. Alex McCarthy Jr., US 888209 Fast, Dean Heiss, Harold Francis, J. Rod the Beer Guru, Nevadon G. Adams, and ZK. Amen. And a special shout out to David Bobrizic and Edgardo Martinez. I'm going to leave that pause there just in case anyone decides to join for the month of May because you can indeed join on Patreon or subscribe start any time this month to be eligible for any of the perks. They include access to an exclusive podcast that I do with John the Flick Pick of John Flickinger's fame. So make sure you go ahead and check that out at the $10 and up level. Also, if you uh, subscribe star or Patreon at $5 or up, you have access to exclusive giveaways of 4K movies, digital films, and a bunch of other stuff in between as well. And if anything you could at least give just anything that you really want to help support the channel and it would really help me out a lot keeps the lights on makes me able to continue to do this kind of stuff so anything you possibly give check out some more information in the description of the patreon subscribe star and of course youtube membership links as well you guys are all amazing and beautiful people have a wonderful day and as always god bless